Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back. Going to share some uh, insights regarding Vesta, the goddess Vesta. I have done a couple of, I think, um, one other video on this, but I'm I'm um, inspired to to offer some more insight because there's just one very very specific point which is um, totally key to understanding the goddess Vesta. She's the largest asteroid out of the four major asteroids that are used in astrology. So the four major asteroids are Juno, Pallas, Athena, Vesta and Ceres. Okay, so I'm going to use Princess Chart just to focus on one very specific point. Um, this is a Prince, a singer who... I, I love exploring his chart. I've done a couple of videos on his chart in terms of harmonics and things like that. So you can check those out. Um, you can find them on the list of videos on my YouTube channel. So you can see that Prince had Vesta in Gemini in the 12th house, right? Uh, pardon me, in the 8th house. And I'll um, <clears throat> explain what, what that's about in a minute. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, summarise some uh, some characteristics of what Vesta points to in the chart and then I'm going to give um, just a couple of comments of what she can uh, correlate to in each house, okay? So that just gives you guys um, just a bit of extra information if you don't have any material on Vesta and if you have her prominently placed in your chart and when I say prominently placed that generally means if she's conjunct an angle okay so you know the ascendant descendant the IC the MC um, naturally if she's conjunct uh, a personal planet so you can see in Prince's example she forms a conjunction to his son okay so that's that's a really core central theme to his life right it also correlates to his own sister. Vesta is the asteroid that speaks to sisters and um, a relationship we may have with a sibling, which if you had Vesta conjunct the South Node, for instance, it's, it's highly likely that you have a relationship this lifetime with a sister, with a, with a sibling, um, that you know, you've had a very important connection with in the past, right? Um, it could also mean that you connect with a particular female who plays a role as um, like a sister in your life. It could just be a friend, you know, someone that you establish a pretty important connection with, um, but she feels like a, like a sister to you, you know, a really important sort of role model in your life. Um, naturally, wherever Vesta is, you know, in the birth chart, she's obviously still going to be very important. Um, but what seems to happen is that when, when you have one of these asteroids very close uh, to a personal planet or an angle, she seems to be a stronger voice in the chart. And so she, streams, she seems to bring up a stronger theme in your life that relates to the meaning of what Vesta is all about. So she was the goddess of the hearth. The Greeks worshipped her as the keeper of the sacred fire and the home fire. The Latin uh, word for hearth is actually focus and she's known as the goddess of um, really intense focus. So one important thing to understand about her is that if she's really prominent in your chart, what usually happens is that the the energy is is so intense because it, it brings about the, the principle of focus, right, because she is she embodies the principle of focus, devotion, commitment, okay? But it becomes this issue of somewhat a, a sacrifice because the focus is to the exclusion of something that you deny yourself of, right, um, in order to be able to harness and focus that, that principle and that energy into a particular um, field, you know, the, the, the focus could be in a career situation, it could be in relationship matters, it could be towards family, 
it just depends where she's located in your chart, right, and what planets she's aspecting. But just remember that she is always such an intense, um, focused principle, and it can be to the exclusion of denying yourself of, of other things in order to be able to, as I said, harness and focus that energy towards a particular direction. Um, so she correlates to sisters, as I said. Uh, she's a transformative uh, principle. Uh, she purifies energy, integrating things um, very, very deeply, very personally. Uh, she esoterically, we could say, you know, she's she's the spiritual goddess, right? Because she she takes us into the deeper alchemical processes that we decide to work on relative to our own evolution and spiritual development. So that's what she primarily um, gets us working with. But she's one of the most complex goddesses and there's the least material written about her as well, which makes her quite mysterious too. And I think part of the reason for that is that, see, her father was uh, Kronos, the planet Saturn, right? And for those of you that are not aware, in Saturn's mythology, uh, what he did was he, he ate all his children, <laughs> which speaks very strongly to the, the, the psychology of Saturn, which, which brings up the matters of um, fear, control, limitation, suppression, and so forth. But um, <clears throat> when he swallowed all his children, she was the first one the first one to go into his stomach. Now, this is an important point. He swallowed many of them. There was there was many of them. And they're all the, the gods and the goddesses, right? Several of them. She was the first one to go in and she was the last one to come back out. Now, that's a very, very significant point because that helped, that gives us a key into understanding what she's really about. And to put it very simply, given that she was the first one to go in and the last one to come out, it, it just shows from a spiritual level how her work is primarily focused within. That's why she was the first one to go in and the last one to actually come back out again, right? That That is the most important point to know about Vesta, right, and, and her story because the staying in his stomach for the longest period of time out of all the children that he swallowed, it just shows that she she was working, you know, very deeply inside his stomach, right, on, on her own principles and, and whatever she represents, which is the uh, principle of focus, dedication and devotion. So, um, you know, if you have her, uh, someone just commented on my Facebook today who has Vesta, conjunct their midheaven, for instance, right? So, you know, the midheaven, which is the 10th house, it's it's a public place, right? It's it's your public self. So it's it's how you're going to devote yourself to your career. But I'll, I'll get to that when I speak about best of three, the houses. Um, so she was the brightest asteroid and she's the only one that can be seen with the naked eye, by the way. Um, the Sanskrit uh, root meaning is, uh, is shining, the shining one, hence being the brightest out of all the asteroids and uh, she can be seen with the naked eye, right? Um, just another point that is worth considering um, for those of you that are beginners and maybe even those of you who are advanced, maybe don't do this or don't consider this, but it is always worth considering midpoints in your chart. You know, um, there are there are a number of different midpoints that are really significant, such as the uh, Sun Moon midpoint, Mars Venus midpoint, Mars Saturn midpoint, Ascendant Midheaven midpoint. They're the main ones that I usually pay attention to, but um, it's it's always worth noting midpoints because you may look at a chart, right, and the your naked eye is not going to pick up on. The multiple layers and levels it, it's it's just impossible so one level of this is looking at midpoints listing and i'll just show you what that looks like here um so if we looked at prince's chart uh i just i'm working with a program called solify and i just go into reports and then i go into 
this section here where it says midpoint listing okay and what you want to do is you want to scroll down um, so there's there's two ways of doing this you can you can look at the midpoints relative to the entire zodiac 360 degrees which starts at zero Aries you can see here <clears throat> so for example you can see that the zodiac in order right Aries Taurus okay if I scroll down you'll see um, Cancer Gemini and you know it goes on and on until it gets to the end okay so you've got that section which is the 360 degrees in the zodiac so let me see um at the moment uranus let's just pick uranus uh see if this works is at 10 degrees of um taurus right so if we have a look here um the midpoint between sun and mars in prince's chart is eight degrees of taurus so if he was alive now about a, a year or so ago when transiting uranus was at about eight degrees of taurus it would have been at the midpoint of the sun mars uh positions in his chart so that's this is looking this is another technique now because this is looking at transiting planets relative to midpoints which is another thing you can do when you're wanting to look at transits right in terms of what's going on at the moment or you know if you want to look in the past or in the future that's up to you uh, but this is just another way of working with midpoints and up the top what we have is instead of the 360 degrees we have the the moon the sun you know every single planet in other words in order and so what you can see here is you can see okay the the midpoint between the moon and the sun in prince's chart is 24 degrees of aries so a few years ago, when Uranus was in Aries, transiting at 24 degrees, this would have been, you know, quite a few years ago, um, if he was alive, he would have had transiting Uranus hit off the midpoint of the sun and the moon. And that would be a significant transit as well. You would look at uh, other things to, to, um, to synthesize what that could possibly mean for him. So to help you out on what I mean by that is you'd look at, okay, well, where does 24 degrees land in his chart at 24 degrees of Aries? Where is natal Uranus in his chart? You know, you need to look at a number of different layers when you're working with these techniques and principles. But um, just in terms of looking at uh, midpoints in his chart, so as I said, the sun moon midpoint is a very important midpoint, right? So for Prince, it was 24 degrees of Aries. Now, 24 degrees of Aries sits in his sixth house, okay? There's, um, there's nothing there, so th there's nothing speaking to that midpoint for us. However, if we go to the opposite point of 24 Aries, um, which, is, which would be called the far midpoint, right? He does have Jupiter sitting at that midpoint. So that brings in Jupiter as, as being quite an important planet relative to how the Sun-Moon relationship plays out. So there's just another example for you guys. So um, the whole reason of mentioning midpoints is to let you know that you might look at your chart just in the same way we're looking at this chart on the screen at the moment. And there's a number of different things that you, you just would miss unless you looked at that midpoint listing uh, example that I just gave. So with Prince, right, because Vesta correlates to sisters, now I don't know how many of you are familiar with this story when after he transcended, but and it's been very quiet, you know, in the last few years, but certainly when he first um, passed on, his sister, uh, who at least from how it appears, right, I don't know her personally, so I, I can't say... 100% what the exact, you know, uh, story and details are from, at least from Prince's perspective. But it, I, I just get the sense that, um, well, they, they they had an estranged relationship. They, they weren't in each other's lives, right? Um, but when he passed on, she suddenly came into the scene and she was trying to drive and control uh, his assets and his money, right? 
and she had quite a dark um, demeanor about her. She um, she appeared, uh, from my perspective, relative to the interviews that I saw of her and just how she spoke about him. She didn't speak about him with through love and respect and honor and um, in awe of him at all. Um, she spoke about him as though he was nothing. <laughs> And, you know, whether you like him or not, he was one of the greatest musicians on this planet and has uh, enriched uh, the, the industry of music in, in so many ways. He's, he's just, he was a genius. He could play so many different instruments. He had, uh, he was just one of the most talented people, really. But when she spoke about him, she yeah, as I said, she spoke about him like he was nothing, you know, like it wasn't a big deal. He was, yeah, just another guy who was a singer kind of thing. And it was almost um, it was almost like a jealous kind of vindictive <laughs> sort of um, response in the way she spoke about him. So the reason I'm pointing these details out is because, um, first of all, Vesta is conjunct the sun and... One thing to always remember about a conjunction aspect, and it doesn't matter what bodies you're talking about, this can be a conjunction between any two planets, right, or a you know planet and an asteroid, such as this case, for instance. A conjunction can play out in in so many ways. It's it, a conjunction contains numerous possibilities in terms of how it can manifest in the person's life. It's largely unconscious okay um think about the new moon right which is a sun moon conjunction and can when you look at the the sky the night sky for instance and we have a new moon you can't see it you know um it's it's dark isn't it it's it's just we know that there's it's there right and we can sense the the energy um but we don't know the possibilities, what the exact possibilities will uh, will come into fruition, into play until we actually get to the full moon, right? That's why the full moon illuminates what was uh, given birth to during a new moon. So we can, we can apply that to a conjunction aspect period in that it is filled with multiple possibilities and it can play out in a number of different ways and it is largely unconscious, right? So just another tip to keep in mind when you're looking at conjunctions in your own chart. Now, this conjunction here, obviously it had a level that connected to Prince himself personally, which I feel was um, many things that we will never know because Prince was an incredibly private person. We can see that because the sun is in the eighth house which is the Scorpio house so people who have eighth house planets are very secretive very private you know they have uh, dimensions to their lives that uh, that are not seen by by other people right and and certainly by the public and he had Scorpio ascendant as well so and he had north node in the 12th house so there's a lot of um, inner dimensions to his life now the Sun Vesta conjunction for him in the eighth house, because it's in Gemini, I feel it correlates to just the thousands, literally, we don't even know how many, but thousands and thousands of songs that he wrote that were contained in something called the vault. What rules vaults? It would be Scorpio. It would be the eighth house because a vault is a is a place where you hide things, right? What was the wasn't hiding it as such but he was keeping it in a very private secretive place where, where he only had access to it right that's eighth house it's in Gemini what was it it was papers where he was writing music and songs and lyrics and things like that so it's pretty literal translation and the Vesta there from that perspective really shows us his own level of focus dedication and devotion to writing his own music his own lyrics, his own, uh, you know, songs, et cetera, et cetera, right? So in terms of how much we know about him, that's what we can take away from understanding this Sun Vesta conjunction relative to his own personal devotion and focus using the Vesta energy, right? But because it correlates to sisters 
and he had this dark sister, Vesta, in the eighth house, a house that is quite dark, right? When it's operating at a negative level, the eighth house is very dark, okay? Um, so he had this dark sister. What rules um, siblings in terms of zodiac signs? It's Gemini, isn't it? So here we have Vista, Vesta, who connects two sisters in the sign of siblings in the eighth house, which is the house of other people's money, okay? So here's the dark sister trying to get her hands and control over his money when he died. So there's a literal <laughs> um, manifestation of Sun Conjunct Vesta in Gemini in the eighth house for the Singer Prince. Now, let me just go through very quickly the 12 houses um, and I'll just complete this uh, presentation. So Vesta in the first house, okay, uh, shows dedication to experiencing a primary relationship with oneself. Because of this intense focus on finding one's own identity or commitment to one's own goals, this person may tend to exclude long-term relationships from his or her life. Single-minded focus and perseverance can lead to great achievements. Uh, Vesta in the second house represents dedication to generating resources to provide for and support one's uh, oneself and or loved ones. One may experience limitations in money, comfort and sensuality so that pressure will be brought to learn the skill of manifesting. Vesta in the third house signifies a dedication to one's mind, furthering personal understanding and disseminating information to others. One may experience limitations in communication as one is pressured to focus on clarifying one's ideas. Also, this person may experience a sense of inferiority about his or her intellect and ability to communicate if the critical faculties are self-directed, working with the mind is common with this placement. Now you can see so far, um, the way this is broken up is, it, it shows us where the focus is, and it also shows us where the limitation is. And the limitation comes from the point I made before, when I said that Vesta can be the intense focusing principle onto something in our life at the exclusion of something else, that can be the limitation, okay? All right, Vesta in the fourth house uh, denotes dedication to one's family and home. There is often a pattern of added responsibility and work in one's home when young that continues into duty and obligations to one's family later on. This person may experience deprivations or curtailment of personal freedom because of family obligations. An efficient approach to domestic needs is suggested. Vesta in the fifth house suggests a dedication to one's personal creative expressions, children or artistic forms. Alienation from children, romance and pleasure or creative blockage can often result. Sexual inhibition occurs through excessive sublimation of sexual energy into fifth house matters or a painstaking focus on flaws may sabotage spontaneity this placement can denote a creative profession and or one which brings attention and limelight vesta in the sixth reveals a dedication to work and efficient functioning because of vesta's association with the sign virgo her significance is very marked in this house Limitations in health will often lead one to focus on self-healing and proper care of the body through nutrition, exercise and positive thinking. A drive for perfection, if not overdone, can lead to things very well. Vesta in the seventh points to a dedication to working on one's relationships. Yet because Vesta strives for self-sufficiency, she's the goddess of autonomy, by the way, just as a side note. Um, Conflict may arise when seventh house compromise and cooperative efforts are required. Often this person will become overly focused upon or obsessed with his or her primary relationship. Vesta in the eighth, individuals have a dedication to the psychic occult fields 
or to depth interpretations with others. It may also be difficult for them to find someone to meet their sexual intensity. And so they they may experience limitations here, complications with, uh, with others over shared resources, money and sexuality, but pressure on one to learn the skill of letting go of personal desire and on learning how to share possessions. Vesta in the ninth house symbolizes a dedication to seeking the truth, conveying wisdom, an overly extreme focus on one's belief system, however, may result in political or religious fanaticism. Limitations may arise that challenge a wide scope of vision. Ideal images can be given form in the material world. William Blake had Vesta in the uh, ninth house, by the way, who's one of my favorite poets and um, artists. Vesta in the 10th indicates a dedication to one's career or position in society. When close to the MC, it can indicate a spiritual destiny. One may experience limitations in finding a fulfilling vocational path if the critical faculties are overly developed. Tremendous discipline, thoroughness, and willingness to work hard are potential talents. Vesta in the 11th house connotes a dedication to group interactions, working with collective, sorry, collectives, land, businesses, political uh, living, fulfills the need to participate in, a large, in larger holes. One may experience limitations in friendships, or groups in order that one may learn the importance of others in one's life. There exists a need to define and focus one's hopes and aspirations so that one can dedicate oneself to an ideal. The 11th house connects to our ideals, dreams and wishes, guys, just for those that are not aware. Um, okay, and lastly, and certainly not least, Vesta in the 12th, this is where I have her, um, implies a dedication to selfless service and to the pursuit of spiritual values. I, I That just speaks volumes to me about my own personal journey. Um, there exists a strong unconscious needs for isolation and retreat, so true for me, as well as for a focus of deep faith. Persecution for one's religious beliefs in a past life that's so true because I know about um, quite a few of my past lives and, and I was um, severely persecuted for my spiritual beliefs and practices. Um, anyway, uh, uh, da, da, da. anxieties concerning public exposure or making mistakes may produce a fear of exploring one's spiritual nature. In addition, there may exist deep unconscious sexual fears and inhibitions which can be overcome by balancing faith and fear. Yearning for the infinite with a practical assessment of the physical world and its limitations. Helena Blavatsky. Uh, amazing. She had it uh, in the 12th house and, you know, she was um, one of the leading authorities in um, uh, esoteric uh, work the, the esoteric works that we have that others have taken on and abbreviated or um you know made their own in some kind of way or uh, reproduced in some kind of way uh it's, it's esoteric astrology is born through um this lady she was um, just an incredible incredible person uh, relative to her mystical insights and knowledge. So, yeah, Vesta in the 12th is about the, the mystic. And I have been called a mystic before. I don't know if, um, you know, maybe I'm a modern-day mystic, you know, to some extent. Anyway, okay, so those are the, the points to consider about Vesta through the houses. I hope that gives you guys some, some things to consider for your own chart. And also just the, the points I made about um, just briefly what, what Vesta points to. Vesta is um, sexual pathology. You know, it's sexual issues, sexual energy, sacrifice, devotion, suppression, repression, denial. Um, deep, uh, complex sexual issues in a person's life are usually seen through the goddess Vesta, right? It can also be the person that lives a celibate life 
uh, that lives in isolation, that lives um, on a mountain somewhere uh, sitting in front of Shiva and just meditating and practicing yoga their entire life. So think of some of the Indian yogis in India. Um, they, they most definitely would have very strong Vesta in their chart. Um, it can be also, you know, the Buddhists, the Buddhist monks that, um, you know, uh, basically relinquish the uh, personal, physical attachments and desires, you know, and focus um, their life on spiritual practices and so forth. This is all Vesta type of work, you know. Um, Vesta is not about external acknowledgement, um, ego you know, personality-driven desires. Vesta is the the alchemical spiritual soul in a very deep inner soul work journey that we commit to for the purposes of evolving, um, becoming more awake. You know, having a a stronger sense of uh, spiritual life and connecting with divine source creation to all things. That that seems to be such an important um, journey in the person's life and it overrides everything else, you know. So check out where your own best is and, you know, other people in your life that you may know and so forth and um, absolutely feel free to leave your comments and questions below. And I'll see you guys very soon. Much love and much blessings. And, yeah, happy full moon in Aquarius. We're just about there. Okay, bye for now.